I was underwater, close to shore, making a visual and photographic survey of a beautiful area. I had been hired by the State Park Commission to study this region carefully to see if it would be suitable for a state park, an underwater park. Though it was the time of year when the water was the least clear, I was still getting excellent film of the scenery and the marine life. In fact, I soon used up all the movie film that I had with me. I returned to the job with two still cameras in waterproof bags. I brought my sea scooter in order to cover a larger area rapidly. The more I saw of this underwater paradise and its inhabitants, the more enthusiastic I became. I noted interesting varieties of abalone. Lobsters here, obviously, it had a good chance to grow. Schools of unusual fish were plentiful. They maneuvered like a well-trained corps de ballet. But to recommend the area would be a heavy responsibility. Though it seemed perfect for diving, Two skin divers have been found dead in these waters since the commission's announcement of its plans. I didn't know that another well-armed diver had chosen me as victim number three.
my assailant believed in hit-and-run tactics. I had to get out of there before he could hit again. Throw your hose. No. It was ripped. Well, that's it. Almost ripped me. Well, where the devil would a thing like this come from? Somebody shot it at me. You're kidding. No. Did you see him? No. It's just his back as he swam away. Look at that thing, huh? You know what that is? That's a swordfish, Bill. Fit it over the end of a regular spear. Boy, that's way out. Suppose that he had hit me with this thing, and he took it out of my body afterwards. How would you have thought that I'd been killed? Well, I figured you tangled with the swordfish and came out second. That's right. I'm gonna go back down there. Here. Something sharp. Cut you, sir? Oh, it's just a scratch. I'll get something for it. It <laughs> isn't anything. No trouble, no trouble. Hey, you all right, boy? I don't know, Mike. All of a sudden, I feel awfully woozy. Let me take it close here, boy. Hey, that thumb of yours is really swelling. It's got a hypodermic needle in the end of it. Suppose it's poison? I'm gonna treat this as if it were. Squeeze on that, huh? Get poison from that blood stream. She's a doctor right away, fella. Search green. Keep your hand down. I raced Billy to a hospital. It was lucky that I did. And a few hours later, it would have been too late. Meantime, I made a confidential visit to a friend of mine, Captain McMurty of the State Police. You were right, Mike. The lab report confirmed that the needle in the end of this spear contained poison. Uh-huh. Well, now, what about those other two divers, the ones whose bodies were found? Well, the coroner's verdict in each case read accidental death due to drowning. What do you think now? Now I'm not so sure. Mike, do you know anybody who'd have any reason to kill you? No. Oh. No, I don't. Unless it's because I'm the guy that's making a report, any diver who's been down there would know that it'd have to be a mighty good one. But who's against a state park? That doesn't make sense. Oh, somebody's against it. They wouldn't be trying to kill people with that poisoned spear. You know, when that guy missed me, he left in a big hurry. He might have dropped something. I think I'll go down and take a look. Might find something. I'll take you out. Okay. Oh, on second thought, maybe you better not. If there's a police boat in that area, it might scare them off. I think I better tackle this by myself, huh? Okay, Mike. We'll try it your way this time. Take care. Oh, I intend to. Murdy's fears were not groundless. 
Even while I prepared to dive, I was being carefully watched. I started with the area where I had last seen the attacker disappearing. I carefully inspected every foot. If anything at all was to be found, a torn piece of rubber, a discarded bottle, a swim fin or whatever, I was determined not to miss it. I saw something shiny, but it was just a bright piece of seashell. Each time I moved on, I was careful to watch everything around me. I checked the surface too, but I guess not often enough. target. Fortunately, most of the force had been taken up by my tanks rather than my head. I looked over the anchor which had almost taken my life. It had no special marking or anything else that might make it identifiable. When I looked up again, there was nothing in sight. just missed me. I'd been very lucky, and in more ways than one. As I made my frantic dive to escape the boat's bow and propeller, I had caught a glimpse of something. Something that might be a break. For the first time, I had a clue. I couldn't wait to get back to shore. This was something that my friends and the state police could go to work on right away. tore off. There was a strip on the bottom of it that was a different color from the rest of the wood. I'm sure that it was a recent repair job. But to check every boat repair establishment in a way that wouldn't arouse the suspicions of the people we're looking for would take a couple of weeks. Oh, well, that's not good. I'll do the checking. From underwater, looking up. I'll check every single boat mooring around here as far as I can go. No, Mike, I can't let you operate on your own this time. I won't have to operate on my own. Well, I'm not going to agree to anything until I find out what you have in mind. You'll be able to locate me the same way that the Navy finds its missiles that fall into the water. Keep on talking. There's a radio device that fits into the nose cone. Okay, I'll show you how it works. Can I use this? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Now, there's the nose cone. The device fits into a little capsule here right next to a small hatch. When the missile hits the water, the device is released, it surfaces, and sends out a signal that the crash boats can hold on. Can you get one of these radio things? Well, I'm pretty sure I can. It'd take me about, uh, oh, six hours to adapt it, though. Okay, Mike. Go ahead and get one. We're in business. My search was long and tiring, but I checked every boat that I could find for miles around, from below, where I could spot that telltale strip of repaired bottom. Just to be sure, I rehearsed the use of the radio device. Thank you. 
By the second day of my search, it felt as though I had looked at the keel of every small boat in that entire section. I had just about marked off every mooring location on the map. There were very few places left. One of them was a small island, just a quarter of a mile or so offshore. But its location would put it just inside the new park's boundaries. I had heard that there were just one or two luxurious homes on the island. However, there was a dock. I hid my boat in a cove and approached the dock underwater. I heard a motor and surfaced to see a cruiser making for shore. It pulled up at the dock and its crew began unloading heavy boxes. While they were working, I slipped in under the boat for a look at the hull. There was no mistaking what I saw. This was it, all right. The same recently patched strip. Then I saw something lying on the bottom. It was a crate just like the ones being unloaded. My guess was that it had fallen overboard, from the looks of it, not long before. It was a slot machine. Suddenly, everything fell into place. The quiet little island was hiding one of those exclusive gambling casinos. But a state park would bring in the state police. There was no wonder they were willing to kill to keep what they had. See if you can get him from the rocks. I surfaced to get my bearings again. I was just hoping that I could get back to report what I had seen without being discovered myself. It was already too late for that. I knew how close I came to being killed. Come on! Come on out, you guys. I got a job for you. When I heard the boat starting up again, I checked to see where it was heading. It was heading straight for me. If I went deep enough, I'd be safe, I thought. but I still had plenty of air for a long dive and my radio signal device to get McMurdy. McMurdy and his radio operator were trying to pinpoint my emergency signal by triangulation.
just got a fix on the Channel Islands. We're leaving for there right now. Send all available boats. confident that as long as I stayed close to the bottom, I was safe. But when I looked back again, I realized that I was facing a nightmare. The boat had dropped something that I had seen before, but only when it was searching for the bodies of people who had drowned. Grappling hooks. Deadly huge hooks that could rip into flesh with barbs more vicious than the teeth of sharks would take every trick I knew to escape them, if I escaped them. I was tiring rapidly, losing the agility that I needed to evade those hooks. I was barely escaping them now. I couldn't keep it up much longer, and I knew it. I was being hauled toward the surface. I could only act instinctively. My fingers raced to release the tank straps. I had to swim as far as I could on that one breath of air. When I surfaced, that would be it. swam until I could stay down no longer. Whatever was going to happen, would happen. I'm Lloyd Bridges, inviting you to join us for another action-packed story of underwater adventure one week from today.